YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back, and once again, I'm breaking down division by division every single team who I think they should and could cut on the roster to free some cap space. We're going to take a look at which, what kind of cap these teams could be dealing with going into free agency, and we'll take a look if they have any players that should be traded, what they could get for them, who they can trade them to. So we did the AFC West, did the AFC North. Now we're on to the AFC East. We'll, f we'll finish the AFC divisions, get to the NFC divisions over the next few days into next week. We'll also have some free agency predictions coming. We're going to have landing spots and where each of them most likely will land. We'll talk about the guys that are trade targets as well, Antonio Brown, Case Keenum, guys like that. So lots of free agency and NFL draft content to come. Check out our Twitter, the Goat House YT. Link in the description. Check out our Instagram too, brand new. Link in the description for both of those. Check out our merch. Link in the description for that as well. Got some cool stuff on there. And our subscriber goal is 20K. If you haven't subscribed to the Goat House yet, please do so. We got NFL, really sports content all the time, year-round here. So please subscribe and click the like button on our videos. We much appreciate it as well. Let's get into this. I'm using the website, spotrack.com. Link in the description. Very cool site. You know, it helps me with the exact numbers Makes it pretty easy here. Gives us an, uh, a good look at what the team's cap situation could look like right now and after they make some cuts. So, again, AFC East. Start with the Buffalo Bills. Rough contract they gave Latule last year. I think he can be solid still. You know, only got one year to prove it. Um, so, he needs more years. And, and, you know, too much dead money if they cut him anyways. So, contract isn't pretty, but they, they definitely should not cut him. If you can get a trade partner for him, go for it. Don't think it happens with that contract um, some tough decisions here the question is can you trade a guy like LaShawn McCoy you know I think the teams that need running backs are going to you know they're going to want Le'Veon Bell maybe Tevin Coleman McCoy is very good still you know still has some injuries come up here and there I don't know if the Bills cut him we can we can say let's say he does 84 million in cap then they already have a good amount I'm going to put him back on because Right now, it's hard to say that they'll cut him. If they do cut him, you know, it may be bad. Bills fans may be, you know, they're going to miss McCoy. But it may be a good sign because if you cut a guy like this, you're pretty confident you're going to get a good starting caliber running back. You're confident maybe you can get a Le'Veon Bell, Tevin Coleman. Um, you know, McCoy might be better than Tevin Coleman, but Coleman a little younger, healthier. So, or they're confident they can get a good running back in the draft. So, they'll have an idea. You don't cut McCoy or trade McCoy unless you have an idea you're going to get somebody good you know in this free agency or draft. So, if they do cut him, it's a good it's you know it, it shows they have a plan. But I don't know if they cut him. I think they can trade him. Will any teams take him? I don't know if they will because all the injuries keep coming up. So, I think, you know, as of now, it's easy to say McCoy will probably be on the team. But it's something to look out for. I think Charles Clay could be cut and they, this is a very good tight end class. Then they go and find a tight end that fits, you know, Josh Allen's offense a little better. So 78 in cap room. They cut Clay, brings it up to 82. Uh, right here you can see Charles Clay. You saved $4.5 million by cutting him. You know, I, I still think he can play. Not saying it's guaranteed they cut him, but I think it's uh, it's realistic. Some other guys, I take a look at Shaq Lawson. He has not lived up to the hype. Um, what happens if you cut Shaq Lawson? Everything's guaranteed here, so you uh, you don't save anything. Uh, but you can trade him. What I think about Shaq Lawson is I think he can still be good. I would like him as a 3-4 defensive end. He's currently playing 4-3 defensive end for the Bills. I think he should be a 3-4 end. He's a kind of a bigger guy. Um, so I think he's in the wrong defense. I think you can trade him. Now, what team could be looking for a, a defense end to compete for the starting job? Maybe a good rotation guy. And what team has a good amount of picks and be willing to give up a sixth, maybe seventh rounder uh, to take on. It's not too much cap, but the team that pops in mind is the Green Bay Packers. Whole bunch of picks. You know, maybe they want to use them, but I mean, pr I think pretty simple. You can trade maybe even a six, but let's say if it's a seventh rounder for a guy like Shaq Lawson, you do it all day. You know, he can compete for that starting DN spot, which you need a couple guys there, um, but he also can be a rotation guy, which is also needed. So we'll process that trade. Instead of saving zero, they save 1.8 million just above that so I think that's a good deal for both teams there um, I think I think realistic 
Packers. Maybe I think you'd fit in the Titans the defense end spot. I don't know if they want to trade picks. They trade a lot last year. Um, you know, I'm looking for a three four team. You know, maybe the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers can trade a late pick. They're supposed to be switching to a three four with Bowles in there. So teams like that, you know, I Packers stand out to me. I think you'll fit at the end spot. I think they have a lot of uh, picks too. I know I know they have a lot of picks, so they'll be willing to do that. I think sixth or seventh rounder. Uh, maybe the Bills want to give him another shot. I, I, you know, I think it's been enough here. I think he fits more of the three four D end, but we will see. Um, so that brings the cap up to eighty four million. Plenty, I think. You're gonna need to get. I think you need to beef up the right side of the line. You need some receivers. Defense pretty solid. You know, you could use some guys for the future, but yeah, I don't know if you really need that too many starters right now. I think Latule steps up this year. I really think he does. Got a young, a lot of young talent. Uh, love the Tremaine Edmonds pick from last year. So you go out, you go get receivers. You go. I think you look at the draft for receivers. You know, if you can get, you have the cap space to get a guy like Le'Veon Bell, Tevin Coleman. So then you make a decision about McCoy. You know, I think you got to be sure you know what you're getting. You know, um, they do have Chris Ivory too. Let's say that's another guy. Let's say if you can cut Chris Ivory, frees up 2.1 million. You know, he really wasn't anything special. I thought he'd be a little better when given the opportunity. So 86 million, over 86 million in cap, plenty of space. Do you go for a Le'Veon Bell? Uh, do you go for a Tevin Coleman? Do you look at the receivers? Receiver classes. Kind of thin, you know. I think Golden Tate's the top guy. Top guy. I think Tyrell Williams is the the next guy. Um, not a huge fan for the money. Maybe he wants. You know, Humphreys next. I think he wants a lot of money. Deshaun Jackson be, could become available. Would he go to the Bills? I don't know if he would go to the Bills. Probably not. Um, so I, you know, I think they they could pick up a Tyrell Williams. They could pick up uh, one of those running backs to have the cap space, and I think they can stick to building through the draft. So mainly I think they'll probably be looking for trades if they do want to cut something. Like a, a guy like McCoy, Shaq Lawson, I think you might as well keep him unless you can get a trade for him, basically is what I'm trying to say. Any guys down here don't think are worth cutting. There are a lot of young guys. Um, you know, they have a solid future. So I don't think it's worth cutting any of these guys. Small contracts. So that'll be the Bills. I expect them to have somewhere around 86 million I guess Charles Clay probably probably isn't you know it's a 50 50 right now 82 million I expect them to have around that going into it'd be great for both teams if they can make that check loss and trade I really you know I was trying to think of who who they can trade them to and the Packers one I like a lot you know there's some of those other three four teams I think he fits with the Buccaneers too um so it'll be interesting to see we'll talk more on that um where we think guys can land like that that'd be interesting but Moving on to the next team, we can do the Miami Dolphins. Why not? We've got the Patriots and the Jets to do. Dolphins, interesting situation here. Right off the bat, uh, you got Ryan Tannehill. Don't think you can trade him. I think he's going to be cut. I mean, that's pretty much known at this point. $11 million in cap to $24.5 million in cap. Beautiful. That's great. You know, going to have some dead money in there, but... It's it's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. I think you go look for another quarterback. In um, I thought Flacco was going to be an option if he was cut because Caldwell isn't going to be in Miami, um, but he goes to Denver, obviously Flacco. So, who do they go for? It's tough. I I think uh, I think Kyler Murray's an option. I think if Haskins falls to them, I think that's definitely an option. Uh, maybe a Teddy Bridgewater, somebody like that. So it's going to be interesting to see. And Teddy actually kind of it kind of goes into. About Devontae Parker, you know, he hasn't lived up to the hype. If they get a guy like Bridgewater, Parker was his favorite target. Yeah, I'm not saying they're going to get Bridgewater, but I'm saying it's a possibility if they do. Parker was his favorite target at Louisville. Does that mean he's going to be his favorite target? He's going to all of a sudden be good in the NFL because they're, they were teammates? Not saying that, but it's worth a try. Definitely worth a try. But Parker hasn't lived up to much. Can they trade him? It's tough. Um,. I don't know if teams would trade. Maybe because the receiver market's thin. So maybe they they can trade him for a seventh rounder. They can cut. I'm actually, I want to see what happens. This is why this website's so great. I want to see we're at 24.5 in cap. Let's cut Devontae Parker. It boosts up. You save 9.3 million. Let's put him back on the team. Nine. Remember that number, 9.3 mil. Let's trade him. Um, a team that needs a receiver, I'm looking at. Two, there's a lot of teams, but two teams that pop my mind, Redskins, Titans, maybe the Raiders. We'll go with the Titans. We'll send on the Titans for a seventh-round pick, sixth-round pick maybe. It's in, it's in that range. Um, and 
you're saving the same exact, but you get a pick out of it. So you're going to look. It's not a big deal if you have to cut him. Maybe they want to keep him. Maybe he's young. He, they want they want to keep him, give him a shot. Maybe you bring in a quarterback that can work well with him. But you can trade him to a team like the Titans, like the Redskins, like the Raiders. Maybe the Raiders uh, is a good one too. So $9.3 million saved. You have 33 mil. And why is it important for the Dolphins? And here's another guy, Robert Quinn, I think they can cut. I think they can cut him. Don't know if anybody would trade. 46 mil in cap. So we saved 13 with Tannehill, 9 with Devontae Parker. You get a late-round pick out of it. 12 with Robert Quinn. And who knows? Maybe you can trade Ryan Tannehill to – let's do that right now. Um, Tannehill, 13. We're saving $13.1 million. We're going to bring him back. We're going to trade – we're going to trade them to, again, we'll, we'll try to find out where they perfectly fit in our free agency prediction videos or trade scenario videos. Uh, but the top of my head right now, let's go to the Redskins. We'll send them the Redskins for a late round pick because he's worth more than a late round pick, but the contract, keep in mind. So we'll say a, uh, we'll say a fifth or a sixth round pick to the Redskins, and they save the same amount of money, but you get a pick out of it. That could work out too. So basically, you're saving the same amount of money, forty-six million. I think these are guaranteed. These sh- these should be locks here. You should, you should trade or release Ryan Tannehill. You should trade or release, most likely release Robert Quinn. Devontae Parker is a fifty-fifty. So forty-six million. They could. We, we're not even done yet either. I don't think. Let's see if there's anybody else actually could be done. Um, a lot of these guys are young. You know, I like their, I like their 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 depth at the DB and linebacker position. They're pretty young. Um, you know, we talk about Devonta Park. Does does Kenny Stills come into play? Could they cut him? They could. I think it's unlikely. Um, I I think for sure Tannehill and Quinn. I think Parker's a fifty fifty, depending on what kind of quarterback you get. But why is it important to boost this up to around forty six mil? Because you bring in Flores, right? He wants to. This defense is pretty solid. You're good at linebacker. You're good at DB. D line's the situation. You need guys like Charles Harris to step up. Uh, the defensive tackle group is is pretty darn bad. Maybe the worst in the NFL, unfortunately. Sorry to say. But look who's a free agent. Trey Flowers, defensive end of the Patriots. If he doesn't get franchise tagged, he's in the open market then. Uh, Brian Flores is was his defense coordinator. He's the head coach of Miami. They need a defensive end. They need a D-tackle more, but they also need a defensive end. Bring in Trey Flowers. He's going to cost a lot. Still young, productive pass rusher. You need this cap space. Very important for the Dolphins here. Uh, I think Trey Flowers is the guy they can bring in. That would be just fantastic. Looking at the def- defensive tackle, and you're not done after that 46. After you get Trey Flowers in that 46 cap space, and again the cap space is showing is for this year. Um, you need to get defensive tackles, and I'm looking. And you need to resign some of your own guys, Juwan James on the offensive line. Definitely need to bring him back, but. Defense tackle position, do you bring Sue back? You know, I think it's a possibility. They definitely can use a guy like that. Maybe he doesn't want to come back. But a guy that stands out to me, Sheldon Richardson, I think, a former Jets player in the same division. You know, I think he'd come in and play defensive tackle for you. Um, I think you can fit Flores' defense. You know, a guy like that, you have the money to get Flowers and Sheldon Richardson for with that cap space. You have the money because you release these guys. Let's say let, let's say they, they don't get rid of – Devonte Parker, um, so that's nine million less there in the cap space. I think you still have some room. Definitely still have some room, but if you can get some draft picks out of some of these guys, that'd be fantastic too. Any other guys down here? I don't think it's really worth it to get rid of some of these guys. Very young guys, not getting paid a whole lot. Yeah, um, so it's mainly at the top here. Do they get any any of these guys here? We will see. Should be very interesting with the Dolphins. Definitely an interesting team for this. Some trade targets, some some cap to be, some cap room that they need to create to get some guys back and go get guys like Trey Flowers. Maybe they want a Frank Clark if they become available. A lot of pass rushers. Problem is, I think a lot of them will go go back, get franchise tagged. We'll, we'll see though. I think that will happen a lot. Another guy that I think will fit Flores' defense perfectly would be Anthony Barr, but. They're pretty much set the linebacker position, the Dolphins. I like their linebackers a lot. Where they got Baker, McMillan, and, and Kiko, who had a fantastic year. Baker's very promising, too. I um, think they're fine there. You know, Flores going to have a lot of fun with those linebackers. Moving on, though. We got the Patriots and the Jets next. Go Patriots first. Alphabetical order. Why not? 
We got 11.6 mil in cap room. They do have to get Flowers back. They got to get Trent Brown back. Um, they lo- they are losing a lot of receivers. They can actually let walk. Maybe they want to get uh, between Hogan, Dorsett, and Patterson. I actually would think most people might say Hogan, but I would actually th- think Patterson. You know, he helped him a lot in the return game. Definitely a weapon. I think they might want to bring him back. I think the receiver class. I keep saying it, it's fuck. It's it's deep. It's deep there. I'm getting I'm getting too excited about the receiver class. Um, so they can get a couple there, no problem. And they they know how to draft. So. Um, but they need some cap space here, you know, get Trey Flowers, get Trent Brown back, guys like that. So we need to create a little more here, 11.6 mil, need to create a little more. Do they trade Gronkowski? There's some rumors about that. I, I really don't think so. I just don't think so. Uh, here's one I think that needs to happen because, again, I think they do need to create some more cap space. I think Dwayne Allen needs to go. Not a bad tight end, but it frees up, you know, it's too much money sitting there to free up. To keep him, I think. I think you keep Gronk. No doubt in my mind they should keep Gronk. Get rid of Dwayne Allen. 7.3 mil. 18, just about 19 mil in cap there. That helps you a lot. Because you're a Super Bowl winning team. You don't need to gain a bunch of stuff here. You need to just get your guys back that you know can help win. And you need to grab some receivers in the draft. And you can help yourself in the draft too. While not spending a whole bunch of your cap here. So, I think... Really, all it needs is maybe one cut. Dwayne Allen still a little, little on the lower side. You know, they just got Adrian Claiborne. I, I think he's going to get more chances. I don't think they're going to cut him, but would say they do. He saved three point nine. I don't think it's worth it. You know, they liked what I saw from him. They signed him up. Um, so I, I think they definitely keep him. Harmon, I don't think he had the best year, but he fills in for Chung, who's up there in age. Um, I, I don't think they get rid of either guy and see what happens if they do. You, Duran Harmon, you save two mil. Chung, you say, but under two mil, um, and Chung can still play too. He's just up. He's up there in age. Just broke his arm, so I don't think it's really worth getting rid of either one. You know, I think that it's so low of a cap or what they save that you know you need to cut a lot of these guys, and then you're just low on your depth. It's a winning team. You don't need to cut these guys and the guys you need to get back. Maybe and even other free agents. Maybe they take a pay cut to play for the Patriots because maybe those are the guys that want to win the Super Bowl. You know, they don't really care about the money as much. They want to win. You're a proven winner, obviously. So, I don't think too many moves need to be made, but something needs to be made. I think Dwayne Allen's got to go, and that really does enough. Seven, seven point three million in, to save is a good amount there. Definitely a good amount. Guys down here, young guys, not really worth it. Um, Ob doesn't, you know, you could cut him. Saves half a million, not worth it. Young player got some potential if healthy, so give him a shot. Definitely not worth it. So, yeah, there, there's the Patriots. I only think they, they cut Dwayne Allen, you know, again. Maybe they try to f- find a trade partner for Dron Harmon. I don't think it happens. I think he fits specifically the Patriots defense. I don't think because they play with a lot of two linebackers. Harmon kind of plays in the box, and he comes in and plays regular safety of Chung when Chung came out. So I think he fits Patriots defense. I don't think any of our teams are going to be interested, really, maybe for a late-round pick, but I think they hang on to him. Maybe they can trade Adrian Claiborne. Um Maybe the Falcons, it's unlikely, but maybe the Falcons missed them that much. They trade a day three pick for them. Um, you only save three mil, but you gain a draft pick. So, you know, the Falcons didn't miss him. Maybe a team like that. Uh, maybe a Panthers team, I think he'd fit on. So, maybe, maybe. It, it's an, it's definitely an option, but I think he's on the team. I, again, I keep saying it, but I think it's a must to get rid of Dwayne Allen there just because, not because he's a bad player, not saying that. It's just because. What you're saving there, that's, it's appealing. It's appealing, especially when you got some good free agents. Last team of the AFC East is the New York Jets. Interesting team, again, here, because you're in a rebuild stage. you got a new defense coordinator. They went from playing a 3-4 defense to we're expecting with Greg Williams to switch to a 4-3, kind of what he's known for. So do they cut guys to fit that better? Leonard Williams' is a defensive event. I think he plays a D-tackle in, in uh, Williams' defense. But I think he's mainly a 3-4 end. So, do you try to find a trade partner for Leonard Williams? That, it's very interesting. It's very interesting there. What Most likely, I think they keep him. Because he could play the D-tackle spot. Maybe, I, you know, I don't know if he's athletic enough to be the edge rusher in a 4-3 end. Maybe Williams just adjusts to what the Jets have. And he sticks with the 3-4. I don't think so, but it's possible. 
So Leonard Williams, I you know if I had to put money on it, I'd say he's on the team. I think he's too good of a talent to get rid of just because you're switching defenses. But let's get a scenario here. Let's get, let's actually come back to that. I apologize. We're going to come back to that because that's the last thing I want to do because it's unlikely. But I think there's a scenario. Uh, looking at the rest of these guys, I think you can cut Crowell's, and I, I you know I don't know if he really lived up to what he was supposed to be. I think you can cut him. You save three million because you do want to go for Le'Veon Bell, but. You also don't want to cut Crow, end up getting nobody, and then you got no running back. But I think you you'll be okay. There's a small risk. I think you get rid of Crow L, save the three million. I think you go for Le'Veon Bell. If not, you look at a guy like Tevin Coleman or Mark Ingram. I prefer Coleman in this offense, uh, but Mark Ingram's an option too. Uh, maybe McCoy becomes available. We talked about him. Jordan Howard could come available. At, you know, uh, the Bears didn't end up getting Cream Hunt, so maybe unlikely. But you may have to trade for him. Guys like that. And then you look at the draft. There's some guys in the draft that, and again, in the future we'll do uh, seven-round mock drafts by team, and I'll kind of give guys that fit in the offenses. So we'll get more of an idea then who could be the the drafted running back that can fit. Uh, but if you're looking for a starter early, you know those guys. Josh Jacobs, you know, you probably won't get your hands on him unless you trade back into the first round. Uh, David Montgomery, Elijah Holyfield I would like for the Jets a lot. Uh, so guys like that. So... But I think they would. They got 98 million cap. I think they'll be willing to go for Le'Veon Bell, and Tevin Coleman. Um, you cut Pinnell here. I think that you know, and you don't save too much. But I think it's you could do it. You, you can really build up this cap here to get the big name guys, and then you need to get guys that fit Williams' defense a little more. You know, you don't need all these linebackers too because they're playing a three-four. So you can cut Pierre Lewis if you wanted to save two and a half million roughly. Uh, I know linebackers would be Darren, uh, Darren Lee, Avery Williamson, and Jordan Jenkins. You know, if they run a 4-3, pretty simple, pretty solid linebackers right there. Makes a lot of sense to me. Um, you could cut, you can cut Brooks. It's not really necessary because look at the cap, but you're getting over a hundred million in cap. You know, it, it's you know you're comfy. You can get the big name. You can overpay because a team like the Jets, not the most appealing. You know, Le'Veon Bell made a joke was that last year that he wouldn't play for the Jets because I think kind of hinted that they were bad. Um, they're in a rebuild stage, but you could pay these guys. You could offer them something they can't refuse. And to do that, you want a lot of cap. You want to be safe. You want to, you know, have a good cushion here. And, and you do need to save some for, for draft picks, which they will be perfectly fine. But so I think you cut guys like this, get a little extra cushion. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, you can get rid of Sharon Peak. Uh, you need to get some more receivers in there. And you can you can go to the draft and do that very easily. A couple of top guys in free agency, maybe Golden Tate. Um, you can you can spend the money there. So I think these are the guys that they can cut and back up to Leonard Williams. Do they want to trade Leonard Williams? I talked about the Packers have a lot of picks. Maybe they're willing to part. Um, man, I like some of these teams I really like. We talked about the Packers, talked about the Titans. I really like some of these teams for him. Um, trying to find the best fit right now. I don't think they trade him again, but I think it's a possibility and the Packers are the ones that stand out. I already had the Packers trading for um, who was a Shaq Lawson after a late round pick, but Leonard Williams would take probably a second round pick. I think second round and maybe a day three. Does a team like that one? The Packers did a very good job drafting last year, so maybe they don't want to give up that early of a pick. Uh, it, it's tough. Um, I think that a team like. I like the Titans. We had the Titans. I like the Leonard Williams for the Titans a lot. Do they trade a second round pick for him though? We'll see. But what happens? You cut 14 million. You have 118 million. More than that. Almost 119 million if you trade them to one of those teams. Um, we could have done the Bucks too. I think the Bucks would have been a good one. I keep mentioning the same teams. Those teams looking for a D end um, to take them to the next step. So you could do it. You could do it there. And then, but then you're creating more. More holes, more needs, I should say. But they're still a rebuilding team. New new coaches in there. Um, you know, you definitely need receivers. You need a running back. You you need defense can be pretty solid. You know, I think you need a couple more guys in the D line, really, in my opinion. But uh, they're heading in the right direction. It's it's going to take some time still. It's going to take some time. And you have the great news. You have plenty of cap space, even if you don't make these moves. So I I'm predicting them to have um, somewhere. Just over a hundred million in cap, and that's great, fantastic, going forward for the Jets. So we'll see if that happens. Can't wait for our free agent prediction, trade prediction videos, lots of NFL draft stuff. So can't wait for all that. 
that's going to do it for this one, though. We still got to get through plenty more divisions. We're going to rip out the rest of this AFC, and then we got one more division left. And then to the NFC team. So we're going to try to get through it. Should be all done by next week. And plenty other different videos are coming out throughout the whole entire offseason. So plenty to watch here at the Goat House. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for everyone's support. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.